Hey guys, it is Citri here again, and today's advanced tutorial we're going to be looking at using RuneCraft to send redstone signals of a near infinite distance remotely. Now, the redstone mechanism and the runes behind it are uh, made in a two step process. Now, the first step I'm going to do is to build the receiving end, which can be done separately and completely at your own leisure. Uh, you need a lock block. You need phase blocks. Phase blocks should be redstone torches. It can be spoof blocks as well, but I prefer phase blocks. You place your lock block, you place a redstone torch above it. Uh, get rid of the extra redstone torches, you no longer need them. And then you automate this. Now we go elsewhere to build our transmitter. So I've positioned myself on the very, very edge of the end that I have here. So far away, in fact, that we are pretty much out of range entirely of Faith Fortress, where uh, the receiver is, which is, in a way, good for what I have in mind. So first step, I'm going to build a clock, and this is the design of clock that I personally use in multiplayer, a bit different from your average clock. Three redstone repeaters, one redstone torch, wire them all together. Its nature prevents it getting stuck. Uh, fully jammed or with no signal in it whatsoever, which is uh, something that can happen. And yes, we get a line coming out and it's going to feed into our redstone sensor, uh, a rune that will activate anything, any automations which are on the four magenta, you see the signature blocks here, uh, on the four magenta signal. So I place this here. And I have my other character sitting back in the fortress, so I'm going to swap places with him. And we can see that as long as there is someone there, uh, so that the clock is transmitting, and there is someone here, so that the signal is receiving, because when Minecraft isn't processing chunks, then block updates like runes don't affect them, uh, then this redstone torch will pulse. So now all we need to do is build something that would as an indicator more so than this. I personally prefer using note blocks for this purpose. And I think I can do it like this. Yep. That way you can choose what material you're using and therefore what instrument. Now, uh, another thing you can do if you want to add an extra element to this, if I teleport back to if you have it so that there are two being activated with each pulse, like this, then the redstone torch will flick on and off instantly. Although it's not happening every time for whatever reason. How strange. That signal isn't always updating. It's because of that, I reckon. Yes, uh, power is coming through that magenta block into it. Where was I? Yes. So, each time the clock pulses, this is activated twice, flicking the torch on and off instantly, but still giving a redstone signal here. You can also flick it the other way manually, so it confusingly looks like there is um, nothing happening here at all, and yet this is still pulsing. So that's something you can use to confuse people if you really want to. Um, if I go back and have them all activate at the same time, see what happens. You get a louder instrument because uh, two are happening at the exact same moment, which is just cool in my personal opinion. So that is a redstone transmitter back there and a redstone receiver here. And now to look at practical applications of that. So naturally, if my character, my other character, who is keeping the clock going by being in range of it, gets teleported so that uh, Minecraft no longer processes those chunks, it stops. Uh, and if it goes back, in fact, I'll travel there myself. If we go back there, then uh, multiplayer uh, redstone clocks are very unstable, which means it won't naturally restart on its own, which could be seen as a good thing, could be seen as a bad thing. Depending on how you want to use it. I'm just going to wait for these chunks to load. There we go. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out which way is north and then I'm going to build an activator. Yes, north is that way. Sometimes clocks will naturally restart on their own, um, but not always. Best to assume that they won't, um, because you're not, that way you're not relying on them to uh, do something that they won't always do. Okay, yellow north, white right. Now the design I'm going for here is that whenever anyone lands on this pressure pad here, it's going to reactivate this clock. And in order to act reactivate a redstone clock in SMP or SSP, you need to have a redstone signal pass adjacent to any or all of the redstone repeaters, cause a block update, basically. I need to move things around here to get that all to fit. So I'm going to go do that. So I've moved everything around, got the clock working and sending energy into the detector again. Uh, the signals that come out of this pressure plate uh, they have to avoid coming into contact with these blocks or they'll get feedback uh, and then they have to come adjacent or at least to touch these so that they will reactivate so it's a bit windy and this is probably not the best solution for it but it's a solution and I'm sure the other redstoners out there who are a hell of a lot better at it than I am will be able to come up with a solution so someone teleports in, lands on this and the clock reactivates now I need to go and install that clock Okay, so the clock is stalled. All that needs to happen is for someone to land on the pressure pad, which would happen if anyone teleported it in. You can hear because um, one of the characters back there and therefore Windows is recording that sound with fraps, that uh, the heartbeat has started again. So you have a sort of working intruder detection system. It is a relatively simple, whoops, relatively simple uh, approach just to get the redstone wiring completely underneath the waypoints so you could have it underfloor or whatever and that is just to place the redstone wire so it's underneath the pressure pad because the pressure pad will send the signals to the floor so, simple rewiring then you can embed your rune into the floor and nobody would be any the wiser because there's no sound whatsoever that comes from this mechanism then it's just a case of someone teleports in and the clock kick starts into action. You start getting the heartbeat. Now another application, a very good application for this is a proximity sensor. If I get one of these working down below here in the lower section of the lab, uh, signifying its undergroundiness, because these don't have to be built anywhere near the surface. Get a working clock is step one of this process. Why is my shift key stuck? Better. A strange thing to happen. There you go, working clock. Slow it down a bit. I don't need to overburden things. Then a redstone pulsar here. Huh. There we go. That won't work because now it's not feeding in, but if I do that, it will continue to work. There we go. That's that working. Um, now we need some way of kickstarting this clock whenever a player comes near, and that way you've got a compact underground unit start sending out automation signals when anyone comes near to something you want to guard or protect. The next stage of this is to build a bud switch, or at least this is how I decided to do it. Two, three, four, five, I think. Not very good at these, but I understand the basic theories. Ooh, nope, that is not the basic theory. Yep, and then... Another one here. No searing clearance isn't helping me. 
and bring it down out afterwards. And of course, a sticky piston goes, where is it? Yep, yeah, right here, facing up the way. No, it has to be higher than that. Failing, there we go. Now we bring this wire back. I'll put a link to the video that showed me how to do this in the description. Because he explains it much better than I am, because I'm not explaining it. There we go, a working bud switch. Now, the way to trigger this, I found, uh, worked best for me, was to use a sugarcane farm, believe it or not. Place that there. Four pieces of sugarcane around it. No, it's one lower. Yes, that's that. Whenever any of these pieces of sugarcane will grow, there will be a block update. We just take that one wire here from the output, feed it in so that it restarts the redstone clock like I demonstrated earlier. And we've got a working bud triggered, which whenever sugarcane grows will thing. And we also need to put in some pistons that will uh, knock off any new pieces of sugarcane that grow because otherwise oops push that forward it shouldn't have happened yes no further forward still there we go and one here yes one here ta-da whenever any of these grow uh, the pistons will all activate knocking all pieces of sugar cane that have grown off and will also re-trigger the clock sending out a signal on the brown woolen redstone piece so there you guys have the basics of redstone transmission using runecraft and two applications for that a waypoint upgrade that can send off a signal when anyone arrives at your waypoint and a proximity sensor that can indicate back across huge distances when a player comes near. I hope you guys find these useful. Do drop any comments you have below, uh, throw a like on the video and if you want to see more subscribe. Cheers!